the Jujutsu Kaisen anime and manga have broken multiple world records. However, there are tons of differences between them that you probably didn't know about. Starting off with the moment when Yuji consumes one of Sukuna's fingers. See, if we go to the first chapter of the Jujutsu Kaisen manga, we can see Yuji consuming Sukuna's finger without thinking much about it, almost as if he did it willingly. However, in the anime, Mappa decided to take a different approach by making it seem like Yuji was forced to consume Sukuna's finger in order to survive from the cursed spirit that was about to eat him, which is a great way of getting the viewers hooked. However, Mappa decided to take things to the next level by creating one of the most disrespectful moments in anime. Cause if we skip to episode 2 of the anime, where we see Gojo face off against Sukuna for the first time, we can see a very huge difference from the manga. In the manga, their battle barely lasted up to 7 panels, while in the anime, there are some extra scenes added to the fight to make it a whole lot longer, and one of those extra scenes shown in the anime was way too disrespectful. Because in that scene, we can see Gojo sitting on Sukuna's back. This scene was never shown in the manga, but Mappa sure did Sukuna dirty with that scene. Next is another moment where Yuji is shown consuming another one of Sukuna's fingers. In the same episode, Yuji is shown packing his dead grandfather's ashes in a silver container, and afterwards, he consumes Sukuna's second finger while standing. This scene is only exclusive to the anime. As in the manga, there is no scene of Yuji packing his grandfather's ashes, and Yuji is shown consuming Sukuna's finger while sitting down. Now that is a crazy difference, but it gets even crazier. In the third chapter of the manga, when Yuji is shown his room by Gojo, we notice a black-haired Asian woman on the poster hanging on the wall. However, in the anime version, both the women's hair and race have been completely changed. Her hair is now blonde, and she appears to be white. This was a direct reference to Jennifer Lawrence, as Gege once stated in the official Jutsu Kaisen fanbook that Yuji was a huge fan of hers. Another interesting change made by the anime happened in chapter 4 of the manga. While Megumi, Gojo, and Yuji are calling out Nobara, if you look closely, you would notice Yuji is wearing a pair of glasses that says 2018. However, in episode 3 of the anime, the animators decided to change that to Rook. Now, I'm not sure why they made this change, but it was definitely a cool detail that most fans probably missed. Speaking of fans, Mappa sure is not a huge fan of Yuji's outfit, cause in one of the episodes, they decide to change it completely. In chapter 8 of the manga, we get to see Sukuna using his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, for the first time. At first, nothing seems off, but when you look at the exact same scene in episode 4 of the anime, we can see Sukuna wearing a different outfit while using his domain expansion. This change never happened in the manga as Sukuna was still wearing Yuji's outfit while using his domain. But this change is nothing compared to his next one. In episode 6 of the anime, Kenjaku decided to take Jogo, Hanami, and Dagon to a restaurant to discuss their plans on taking out Gojo. During their meeting, Jogo decided to demonstrate his strength by barbecuing all of the humans in the restaurant, which is just brutal. However, this scene is even more gruesome in the manga as you can see the skeletons of the victims after they get burned. While in the anime, Mappa decided to tone down the brutality a bit by not showing that much detail. But that wasn't the only change Mappa made. In that same episode, Mappa introduced us to an object called the Prison Realm for the first time. This object was never shown in the exact same chapter of the manga till several chapters later. Now we gotta talk about this crazy reference Mappa made in the anime. In one of the episodes of season 1, we can see Yuji calling out iconic attacks from iconic anime series like the Rasengan from Naruto, Bankai from Bleach, the Spirit Bomb from Yu Yu Hakusho, and the Kamehameha from Dragon Ball. Interestingly, this reference was never present in the manga, but it added a cool touch to the anime. But something that was totally uncool was Junpei's death. In the manga, Gege hardly spent much time on him. However, the anime decided to make up for it by adding some extra scenes that were originally not in the manga to the anime. Like the scene where Junpei beats up his bullies, which was amazing. However, Mappa took things way too far when they added him to the opening theme songs and even showed some scenes where he was shown wearing a Kyoto Jutsu Hai uniform and hanging out with Yuji. The anime made it seem like Junpei was going to have a nice life, until he got turned to Perry the Platypus from the iconic TV show Phineas and Ferb. Now if you only watched the anime, you probably missed this huge change. In chapter 13 of the manga, we can see Gojo with 6 DVD covers, each referencing different iconic movies. If we skip to episode 6 of the anime, we can see Gojo holding the exact same number of DVD covers, but if you look closely, they are way different from the ones shown in the manga. 
If you take a good look at this scene in the anime where Nanami and Yuji are climbing up the stairs, you might notice the drawings of Oikawa Toru from the Haikyuu anime. It turns out this reference was only made in the anime and not in the manga. And while that reference might have been pretty obvious, I bet you probably missed this next reference. In the Jujutsu Kaisen anime, there are tons of Neon Genesis Evangelion references. Take for instance this scene. You can even see Principal Yaga and Gojo sitting in the exact same way as these two characters from the Neon Genesis Evangelion anime, where we can even see Principal Yaga wearing the same pair of glasses as the one of the characters. Once again, this reference was only made in the anime, and never made an appearance in the manga. Now these were all the changes made in the first season of the anime, but things are about to get even more insane because we're moving on to changes made in the second season, and trust me when I say they would blow your mind. For starters, we gotta talk about the time when Mappa decided to turn Yuji into Spider-Man. If we skip to episode 35 of the anime, we can see Yuji attacking Jiro, Granny Ogami, and her grandson with a special like string similar to Spider-Man's spider webs. He was also shown swinging around and sticking to walls in the exact same pattern as Spider-Man. But probably the best reference made by Mappa in the anime happened in the Toto vs Mahito fight. During their battle, we see Toto and his favorite Japanese idol, Takada, pose in a way similar to how characters from Jojo pose with their stands. While this scene was never shown during Toto's fight with Mahito in the manga, it was taken straight from the cover of the fifth volume of the manga. Next, we have the change revolving around the Sukuna vs Mahoraga fight. During their battle, a single punch from Mahoraga sends Sukuna crashing through a building. Minutes later, we see Sukuna comes out unfazed, holding a bag of popcorn and a cup of soda in his hands. This scene was never shown in the manga. But probably the saddest change in the series happened with Nanami's death. In the manga, we see Nanami attacking a bunch of transfigured humans before he's killed off by Mahito. However, in the anime, the animators decided to add some extra heartwarming scenes of Nanami dancing around and smiling, making his death even more sad. That's not the only change related to Nanami. If you look at the scene in the manga where Mahito touches Nanami closely, you will notice he touches him from the front. In the anime, Mahito is shown touching him from the back. But that's not all. The aftermath of Mahito's touch is far more brutal in the manga. In the manga, we can see Nanami's spinal cord after the majority of his body has been blown away. This detail, however, was completely removed in the anime. Nanami wasn't the only one to face a gruesome death. Nobara suffered the same fate. There's a slight difference between the manga and the anime. In the anime, we see Mahito touch her face from the bottom left side. In the manga, however, Mahito jumps over her and touches her face from the top left side. And while the majority of the changes made by Mappa in the anime are pretty cool, none of them can be compared to this one. During the Geto and Gojo breakup, we can see two major differences between the anime and the manga. In the manga, we can see both Gojo and Geto facing one another and speaking in front of an unnamed store. While in the anime, we can see Gojo facing Geto's back and speaking in front of a store named KIC, which is a direct reference to KFC. This moment was so emotional that even the official KFC Twitter account decided to tweet about it. Moving on to our next change, which happened in the last panel of chapter 93 of the manga. In that panel, we can see a bunch of Jujutsu sorcerers present in the Shibuya arc during the moment when Gojo gets sealed up in the anime by Nobara and Meimei. Now those were some crazy changes, but if you want to see something even crazier, then check out this video where we talk about some fun facts and easter eggs you probably missed in Jujutsu Kaisen. Go on, click it!